Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. And nostalgia today as we look back at a Maxcom 7E emergency CB radio. And here it is, the Maxcom 7E AMT alert mobile transceiver. And it's original PVC kind of attache case, all nicely uh, screen printed as well. Quite smartly presented. Now, these were all the rage back in the day when CB was in its hype, sort of in the early to sort of mid 80s here in the UK. These were kind of sold to pretty much sort of older people, probably people of my age now, that kind of were sold this sort of dream, this, this fantasy that if they broke down, then they would have one of these in the back of their car and they'd be able to whip this out and actually put, send out an emergency transmit call on Channel 9, which they believed would be monitored, and then people would come to their aid, whether it was actually other CBers that would come along or someone would alert the breakdown services. But the idea was, was if, yeah, if you broke down, you know, you would be able to get sent someone to help you. Now, I think in America, I think this was probably, Channel 9 was probably actually a viable emergency service, certainly with the freeways and, and the truckers on CB. There's certainly a lot more people using CB. But of course, you know, in the UK, it was, it was a lot of teenagers, a lot of kids, things like that. But it didn't stop the older generation buying these. And I remember a friend's dad actually going out and buying one of these. It may not have been this particular one, but it was something very similar. And him putting it in the back of his car and being totally convinced that if he did break down, he would actually get some sort of help. We always wanted to sort of borrow it off him and put some batteries in it and give it a test and everything else. But he was also very protective of his actual CB, little CB radio, because these things weren't cheap, remember. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to actually sort of crack this open. Supposedly new in box. Um, did buy it. Unfortunately broke a golden rule of mine. I have bought this untested. Oh, God. So this could be a very short video, but uh, hopefully it's going to be okay. Because to me, if something is actually untested, it generally means it doesn't work, and uh, that's how someone's trying to sell it. But this one, it came up, yeah, okay, it was a late kind of Saturday night thing, I was sort of like getting ready for sort of bed, you know, that sort of, just saw it on eBay, um, but looked, said it was mint inboxed, and uh, to be honest, I've had a quick peep inside, and I'd say, yeah, I'd say it pretty much is pretty mint in box. It's quite nice, isn't it, to get sort of things like this all the way back from sort of 1980s, 25, 26 years ago that are actually still in kind of a new condition. But the guy did say, although I didn't actually notice it, I put a bid on it, I didn't know at the time, uh, one of those things, last minute, you know, I think the bidding was at about £9. It still had about 10 days to go. Put £20 on it. Um, just put it on, forgot about it, completely didn't think I would actually win it for £20 because I think these things are rather collectible in certain fields. And then of course, 10 days later, I get an email saying, congratulations, you've won it. Went back onto the ad just to double check what I'd actually uh, bought and then, then discovered it was untested, which is probably why it didn't attract the actual uh, strong bidding. Then thought, ah, so I might, I haven't tested this. Um, so there's a good chance, I, you know, this might be a very short video because I might have a very nice kind of doorstop here, but actually not a transceiver that works. But anyway, straight into the box, and it looks quite hopeful actually. Everything sort of seems to be in its original packaging, which is always uh, always quite nice to see. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that, you know, the guy the guy who's selling it, I did sort of check his uh, site, what he's selling. And he seems to be sort of someone that deals mainly sort of in sort of house removal and things like that. He's not a radio guy. So, uh, yeah, it could, could actually be that this possibly is, I think it actually is a sort of a new inbox, old kind of like 1980s radio. So, uh, you know, if it works, I've probably done quite well, if you like that sort of thing. So before we actually crack into the radio itself, we'll just have a quick flick through the uh, actual instruction manuals. And, uh, you know, I do like these old kind of um, manuals you used to get with these radios. Very, um, very descriptive, very sort of clear. And you did used to get a lot of information, a lot better than the uh, sort of Japanese kind of things that you get nowadays and Chinese sort of uh, instructions. And even you got instructions here for actually aligning the radio, if you was actually going to sort of service it. Alignment of trans transmitter circuitry. So, you know, they really did go into details and uh, you've even got a uh, sort of parts layout here which is sort of like a visual schematic. Tells you um, all the chips and all the actual little pots there that you may need to adjust. And there's one on the uh, double-sided double board 
um, looks most of it looks like, like through hole technology to me and even a, a block diagram there I don't know if you can make that out on the camera where am I there and uh, turn that over there we go a UK uh, UK frequency chart for the uh, FM frequencies and it, I know it's, it's rather small a full schematic as well so it, it certainly is sort of quite nice, you know, this, this is what you used to get when you used to buy a radio. I mean, this is the sort of kind of like, sort of quality and um, printed, in, made, printed and the whole thing made in Korea. But this was actually sort of the kind of quality you get. And you've got also a little uh, guarantee card. Do you know, when I get these occasionally, if I buy something mint in boxed, I always kind of feel tempted that should I, you know, send it off. Send it back to, send it back to Manchester. Um, sh shamans in Manchester and see if they're actually still there. So this is actually the, the one year warranty that came with the unit. And that's interesting, look at that. That's very interesting, I don't know if you can make that out. Date of purchase has been put down as the 31st of the 7th, July, 1989. Now you know what, you know, I thought these radios, I mean I don't know where you live, but certainly around Hertfordshire where I, I came from, certainly, you know, by 1989 this was all over. C, CB was really sort of finished. I would say probably right about 19 sort of 84 it may dragged on sort of to 85 but it was well over by sort of 89 certainly the uh, channel 9 the mon monitoring of the channel 9 that finished sort of only probably after about a year so that's a bit that's a bit weird so this, this radio was actually sold in 1989 so I don't know if this was stock that was left on the shelf I'll have to actually um, in a minute I'll, have, I'll get this radio out of this uh, rather sort of quite a nice case really and we'll actually have to see if there's actually any sort of quality control sticker on the actual radio itself to find out actually when this was uh, manufactured because I thought this would have been much earlier I had this down as probably sort of 82 83 something like that so uh, that's a bit interesting so we'll, we'll certainly delve into that a little bit later on so things you got into in the box well first off you got this rather little uh, puny sort of magman antenna base with a uh, with a lead which has sort of a I think it looks like a kind of almost like a sort of malphono type plug on the end there and uh, obviously the idea was which you had your sort of telescopic antenna whip and uh, you could either actually screw this straight into the uh, radio itself and then using rechargeable batteries in the battery pack you could I suppose sort of use it as a handheld walkie talkie or which was really its main idea was that you would screw it into this uh, mag mount little uh, base here and of course this would then secure onto the roof of your car or your van and the idea was that uh, this would get your signal out so you could actually get emergency help I mean, whether that was actually ever going to work I don't know um, it's obviously magnetic antenna I mean this whip itself I mean I haven't actually it's probably about what four three and a half four foot long but I suppose really, when, I suppose when you think about it, I mean, you know, go back in the day, well, there were CB radios all over the place. I mean, even in the road I was living with my parents, there was at least three B, sorry, at least three CB radios actually in that road. So I suppose really, you don't even need to get out maybe a mile to be within range of hopefully someone hearing your call, whether they'd actually bother responding to you, of course, and uh, sending you you know some help I don't know but I suppose that was behind the actual theory you didn't need to get out very far so in here looks like we have a uh, adapter here for the cigarette lighter socket which will give you these sort of battery clips so you could uh, clip straight onto the battery I suppose uh, maybe not all cars had cigarette lighters in sort of like the early 80s I suppose it was a maybe an optional extra I don't know I uh, can't remember I mean, nowadays, it's gone back the other way. A lot of cars you get now don't have cigarette lighters. You might be lucky to get a 12-volt supply socket, but it's sort of unfashionable now to have a uh, cigarette lighter in your car. So that takes care of that. And then there's the actual uh, power lead itself, which is just a simple cigarette lighter socket, 12-volt adapter, going up to just a little uh, plug there. So that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much what you got, nice and simple. Got this little thing here, which I'm not entirely sure... <laughs> It looks a little bit kind of weird. I imagine that somehow attaches to the radio. Um, maybe you hung the radio up or something. I'll have a look at that in uh, a little bit, little bit later on. But that, that's that's all you got. That was it. Okay. So here's the case of the radio came in. And uh, do you know what? I'd forgot this stuff existed. This is this kind of horrible. I mean, absolutely horrible 
cheap cardboard type stuff which they, they passed this they used to try and pass this off as leather they would say you'd get a leatherette case a lot of um radios things like itt ferguson transistor radios used to come in one of these sort of horrible hard sort of cardboardish sort of cases and what would happen is this stuff was yeah it was you know it was fine but it, as soon as it got wet it would all kind of like blow and it would get very soft and it would soon tear but this case i think was what is quite good about it is the fact that i'm not going to try and open this because i think you could t it tends to rip quite easy but obviously in there um is a, is a battery case and that would be where you'd put your rechargeable batteries and it actually has a battery charge outlet socket there and also a uh connector there that goes goes into the radio so no, the batteries themselves were actually not inside the radio which is a good thing as these things get older because obviously people leave batteries inside and they sort of tend to leak so that's what you got that was your so case moving on to the radio itself well what did you get for your over 100 pounds back in the 80s not a lot in the way of controls um no s power meter there which is a little bit unfortunate you got space for it but obviously they thought they'd save some money or possibly battery power and no led display for the channels all you got was the actual channels printed all the way around the selector itself um yeah it's quite clear i suppose it uh, once again you know whether that was to save battery power it's probably just to sort of save money but it feels quite nice to be honest it's, it's sort of heavier than I, I thought it would be considering that the batteries are, are separate as well it's got quite a nice sort of feel to it and the actually the channel indicate in selector switch itself it's very precise it's got got a nice quality sort of filter I was, I was expecting that to be a bit sort of cheap and clicky and but no it's actually it's nice I think and, and I think the ring there is that is uh, a metal ring on that as well so that's a bit of a surprise so moving over to that you just got a basic squelch and then there's the volume control which also is the on off switch Below the channel selector switch is a little microphone. Unfortunately, there's no sort of connection for an external microphone, which would have been quite nice. You've just got a built-in microphone. I imagine that's just a kind of condenser microphone, whether that's going to be of any reputable quality. I don't really know. And then you've got the uh, sort of CB mark there, 2781, just to sort of say that's an official actual product. So at least I know that's actually a, uh, a UK FM unit. And then below that you've got the PTT, push to talk button, just as you'd expect. And then uh, quite a nice speaker actually, you know, quite a nice sort of large speaker there. So hopefully we'll, we'll get some good audio out of it. On top of the radio, I've got this little plastic protector here, which is for the external antenna. And then uh, move into the bottom of the radio, you've got a 12 volt DC power jack. An external antenna connector there which looks surprisingly like a phono plug that looks like a female phono plug so it might be quite easy to actually connect this to a, a uh, external antenna and then a high low button which i'll assume is transmit power and this is a full full pint for what transmit radio i did check that before i actually even put a bid on it because some of these were quite low in power some of these were actually only about what one one and a half watts but this is actually a full four watt power so i'd have thought in low i'll have to check but i'd have thought that used to be sort of like 0.4 of a watt so if you're talking to someone in close proximity you might not need all the power and on, on the back you've got sort of a that looks like a uh, sort of standard microphone sort of a holder really that would just clip onto a standard cb microphone and then you've got the serial number and what, what's interesting is i noticed i don't know you can make that out there you go look it's manufactured june 1987 so this is a very late at least i think it's a very late produced radio like i said before you know by 87 it was all kind of over here in the uk as far as far as i'm concerned so i'm very surprised but i really thought this would be an earlier radio so there you go that's that's pretty much it not not a, to be honest it, it's better than i thought it would be it's, it's quite a nice sort of unit now whether it works or not well there we go it would make sort of quite a nice door stop <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I think it's certainly it's in good condition it certainly has i think it is new in box and uh, certainly yeah i'd say that sort of that that has hadn't really been used at all so cosmetically very good does it work well we're gonna have to wait and see so here we are, once back in the shed, 
where it all started and I've just connected that rather crudely just to this little uh, CB power supply there we've got that switched on and we've got that plugged in and this is the first time we could turn it on a moment of truth nothing that's a little bit loose but I know this power supply works there's no actual on off light but I was, I'd expect some static bugger <laughs> oh well well thanks for watching this video but <laughs> oh hang on let's have a I think well this is obviously very uh, this is very old so we need to go through oh did you oh, hang on loose connection ah something right okay bear with me I need to actually investigate a loose connection because I think there's actually a fuse in there so it might be a loose fuse holder two secs and I'll be back well there we go it, <laughs> well I'm breathing again just thought there was just a loose connection there on the actual fuse holder itself well we've got well, we've got static, so if I switch on the old Humming Harry here, the old Murphy base station, um, we're not actually going to go to Channel 9, we're going to respect Channel 9, I don't know why, because no one else will, but we'll go to 8, and we'll go to Channel 8 there, scrunch up, okie dokie, put that on there, scrunch works. Now, um, you may notice I've not actually attached the antenna. I know I should, yeah, I know about dummy loads and things like that, but I'm just doing a basic test here. Right, let's do a receive test. Whoa. Well, that was interesting. Too much volume, hang on. Copy, 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 testing, testing, foot in the shed, copy. Well, that seemed to work, didn't it? So, it's actually receiving... Now we just need to check if it's actually transmitting. I'll whack up the volume now, it's probably going to feed back. Here we go. Right, sorry, sorry about the camera. Right, here we go. Oh, too much volume again, that sounded hopeful. Here we go, let's try now. Too much again. Oh, bear with me, bear with me. Copy. Copy, copy. I think there was some audio there. Let's just turn it up a bit more. Whoa. Copy, copy. Fred in the shed. Copy, copy. Copy, copy, copy. Well, a little bit of a hum. I don't know if that's maybe because the actual power transformer is too close. But there you go. It actually seems to work. <laughs> well, it seems to be... So, uh, yeah, there we go, that, that works, so uh, pretty good, really. I think it's, I took a chance, bought something that was untested, and uh, seems to work. Shame it hasn't got a um, sort of power meter. You've got this, obviously got that TX light there that lights up, but uh, there we go. So, yeah, a good test. So, there we go. <laughs> Quite relieved. It worked. I, I really thought for a minute there... I'd probably sort of bought a broken one, but there we go. It took a chance and it paid off. So there it is, the Maxcom 7E mobile alert transceiver. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we thought these were quite naff back in a day, back in, uh, and I suppose they're sort of still a little bit naff now with that little silly twig and for what they are. But I say one thing about these, I think because they were bought by older people, who valued these sort of things more than we did as kids? It's certainly been well looked after, and I'm quite impressed with the quality of this. It's it's almost pretty. What well, is as new? I, I certainly, and you know, you go on sort of eBay if you want to pick up a forty-channel mobile sort of CB radio. Just you get the Harvards and the Albers, uh, the Fidelities. They're still around, but a lot of them have been sort of kicked about and scuffed up and. The rig, rig doctors have got inside and adapted them and all the rest of it and have been tuned. So, but it just seems that these emergency radios have been more looked after and have, have sort of been avoided. And they are still a 40 channel CB mobile radio, um, full 4 watts, do the job.
Um, so yeah, maybe there's still a bit of life left in these. It's a, it's a shame that CB radio is just so dead around this area because I'd, I'd love to, to get a rig check on this to sort of see how it transmits. But what I might do, I won't get it done, I won't get the video done and get it uploaded today, but what I might do is just go out in the car, um, drive say a mile from the home and pretend to break down and, and just transmit back to my president in the loft just see what it does see if it actually works but anyway that'll be it for to, that's it for now so i'd like to say thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please feel free to subscribe i'm often doing some of these crazy reviews but for now as always i'd like to say cheers and thanks for watching bye bye now